Good evening, and thanks very much for joining us tonight. Uh, I thought you'd all come to hear my last speech, but uh, another time, two weeks' time, I'll hold it off. Almost as many people were in the penny farthing the other day, wearing blue sweaters. It's great. Now we're going to, uh, I'm going to ask council to change the agenda, because probably 90% of the people in the room have come for one item on the agenda, and I don't think it's fair to go through all the other items, deliberate, and make everyone sit around here waiting before they can talk. So I'm going to ask council if you could amend the agenda, and there's been, so far, three amended agendas. So I am going to ask you to amend the last agenda that came forward, which is to uh, deal with the correspondence with respect to the Oak Bay Lodge first, uh, and then deal with the motion uh, that has already been tabled to lift it from the table so we can deal with it. I would vote that we uh, see the correspondence relative Well, no, no. I'm asking to change the agenda, change the agenda. to do that. Uh, and then we'll work through the minutes, then we'll get to the correspondence, then we'll move to that item, then we'll go back to the beginning again. Okay. Mr. Crossman. Sir. Uh, with respect to my case, 1839 Hampshire Road, uh, we have a very, very large crowd in the, in the lobby, and I, I'm concerned that this is not an appropriate venue for this meeting. The people out there, I'm told, can hear the debate. Yes. But there's no microphones out there, and they won't be able to see the visual presentation uh, presented by Baptist Housing. Okay, and so. I would respectfully request that the meeting be adjourned to a larger venue. Yes. Okay, so, so I, I, appreciate, I appreciate that comment. Uh, this, won't be, this won't be the first time we've held a meeting in here with this many people. The, the, the lobby is set up. To have a mic, to have speakers in there, so people can hear. There is only one microphone here, and they can come forward. I'll recognize them when they come forward. And as far as the presentation, I'm actually going to limit the presentations on the audiovisual anyway, so we won't have to deal with that. So I will, I will recognize people outside who want to come in and speak. Okay. So the first item. Can we confirm that the people outside can hear? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Good. Okay. Is the speaker on? There is a speaker on. Okay. Okay, so we've dealt, I'm going to call the question on that. All in favor? Country, motion carries. First item is special council minutes. That's October 24th. Everyone's got those? Okay. Second, thank you. All those in favor? Country, motion carries. Next is council minutes, October 24th. Second. All those in favor? Country, motion carries. Special council, November 3rd. Second. Discussion? Um, Just speak, with, speak loudly with, so it yeah, carries sure. outside. With respect to the um, uh, discussion around the pedestrian walkway as a consideration for the $400,000 yep. grant. It's being um, shared with us through staff that there was actually a walkway that it belongs to the municipality between uh, Elgin Street and Yale Street. So, um, and part of the discussion was in consideration of the pedestrian walkway going from Elgin down through Yale, though we didn't have that information, we do now. And uh, so what I would like to ask, um, uh, council to is to consider that we ask staff to uh, um, script up the pedestrian pi pi uh, walkway, not through Elgin Street as we had discussed, but through Elgin, the Church Way, and yeah. down through Yale Street. So the extension of Byron. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, staff, is that is that clear enough, Miss Hilton? Yeah, uh, yes, you want to change the direction instead of doing the pedestrian walkways down both sides of Elgin to go through the public road right of way, just <coughs> north of the church down through Elgin to Oak Bay Avenue. Uh, that's right. And, and could we use the word 
pedestrian walkway as opposed to sidewalk because it does have a very different connotation. Please. Okay. Council's comfortable with that direction? Okay, both those applications are going to come back next uh, Saturday, next uh, Monday, 21st, and we'll have to make a decision on them. Um, my spies tell me there's probably going to be about 300 applications because it uh, bears uh, every single council can make an application, every single municipality, uh, every single electoral area, which is 144, and every single regional district, which is 28. So uh, for a $30 million pot, that's an awful lot of applications. So just as a background, that is. Okay. Um, I'm going to call the question on the minutes. Enough direction there for staff? Okay. Those in favor? Country? Motion carries. Committee of the Whole. November 7th. Second. Second. Uh, staff, my understanding is uh, 346. Has that been withdrawn? Uh, just uh, until the next committee, actually, there's going to be a redesign on it, so they're coming back at the next committee. And so that's why it's not in the uh, items to be brought forward? That's correct. Okay. Okay, call the question. Those in favor? Country. Motion carries. Uh, first item now under amended agenda number four is to receive all the correspondence from 356 right through to... 2861. I move we receive that correspondence. Second. Okay. Session on correspondence. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, this packet, uh, which is fairly thick, has a fairly long uh, petition. It was just received. Uh, by us, or at least when I arrived, uh, minutes before we got here. This did not really leave uh, sufficient time to uh, review it and consider it. Uh, and uh, I feel in, in that sense, Mr. Mayor, that uh, uh, this is, again, another example of how rushed this process is, that we're being presented with an awful lot of correspondence at the last minute. So uh, there, is, there is a lot of correspondence. And, um, uh, just, just, I wanted to put it on the record that really I had exactly probably about uh, two and a half minutes to, to read this, and that's not sufficient. So I, I, I don't, I'm going to vote in favor of receiving it, but uh, with that as a duty, thank you. I, I understand that, and frankly, staff have been scrambling today, and that's why we're on the fourth amended agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, two letters actually came in after I left the municipal hall at quarter to six and came back at six thirty. So. Um, I think we all, including staff, have tried to get as much of that correspondence in a timely fashion to you. But obviously you can actually, um, this is not a public hearing, whereas a public hearing stuff can be read, letters can be read at the public hearing. We've tried, as, because this is a variance, to try and put it on the agenda in front of you. But I understand uh, your uh, unease and uh, I think it's shared by all members of council. Okay, can I receive the uh, correspondence? A moved and seconded. Those in favor? Country, motion carries. Now, if we can deal with the item itself. I move that we list the development very permits for 2251 February. Council, please speak louder. So that I move that we lift the development variance permit for 2251 Capra Bay Road from the, from the table. And the second? Second. Councilor Coffey. I will remove myself from the discussion for reasons previously stated, which is that my father is a resident of Oak Bay Lodge. Okay, thank you, Councilor. Your Honor, I've uh, just been tested by three people who are standing in the back. They can't hear anything. Okay, I'm going to make sure that Council speaks in. Thank you, Mr. Ziegler. And I need to be <coughs> sorry, I did that petition through hours and hours of walking. And I didn't quite understand what you're doing with that petition. Sorry, I... I, I can't hear what you're saying. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get this so we can deal with it. Okay. And then I'll deal with your question. Okay, thank I've you. I've got a mover, I've got a seconder. Is it as loud as it can go? The trouble is if you turn any louder, it's going to back. Just make sure everyone speaks into the microphone. 
Thank goodness we got a new microphone system. Okay. Councillor Jensen, did you want to... I've got a seconder on lifting from the table in Councillor Braithwaite. Councillor Jensen? Yes, I'm going to speak in opposition uh, to lifting it from the table. Okay, is there still a hearing problem? Yes. Yeah, no sound can hear. Uh, I'm going to speak to it, uh, and I had a number of reasons, and, but I'll start with the one that was brought up uh, originally by Mr. Hayes, that uh, this particular venue that we have tonight uh, is unsuitable for people to, I think, participate fully uh, in, in this debate and this dialogue and discussion. Um, that's, that's uh, the, uh, wasn't, I wasn't going to uh, use that as an example because I didn't expect that many people here, but this uh, particular uh, project has generated an awful lot of interest in our community. I certainly hear that as I'm going door to door. Uh, and one of the key things that I've heard is how rushed uh, this particular application has been. Uh, we received this sometime in September, uh, and in September we asked for a number of uh, items. In fact, I'm told that there is now a model, despite the fact that we asked for that uh, some time ago. I have not even had a chance to see it. Uh, mainly because when I came in tonight, uh, there were so many people milling around. I'm told it was behind all of those people. Uh, but uh, uh, that's, uh, that's just an indication of how rushed this process has been. Um, I think it's a wise idea, Mr. Mayor, that we leave this item tabled until new council can take up this issue in January. see the stack of uh, correspondence, which uh, I don't think any of us have had a chance to read. Friday was the first time we saw photographs that were presented uh, that are informative, uh, but I don't think the community has had a chance to uh, consider it, reflect on it, and uh, perhaps uh, uh, bring their own photographs and their own views to bear on those photographs. Everything about this has been hurried up, and now we see also, now we see in this, I'm just flipping through some of the correspondence, is that there's an obvious uh, element of our community uh, that uh, may be in favor of this particular project as well, because we've mostly, uh, documentation we've had, have been from people who are opposed to it. Surely we need to take the time to have a proper dialogue in our community about the pros and cons of this particular project and not to rush it. What I'm hearing tonight is that we've got to digest all of this, got to look at the model, got to digest all the correspondence, figure out what these photographs mean, and come to a decision tonight. And I don't think that will serve the community well, it, regardless of what side you're uh, on in this debate. It will not serve the community well to proceed at this point. So I'm going to vote against this motion and suggest we leave a table until new council has had a chance to get all of the information, all of the information that's uh, particularly the last minute information can be digested by uh, the neighbors uh, and uh, other members of our community. I and think that's the- this out here. Nobody's hearing anything. We're wondering oh. if you can move the venue to Monterey or reschedule so that half of us, have, like, mm -hmm. um, it's full all the way to the back and nobody can hear anything. Okay. Uh, that's correct. So either move the venue so you can all hear, get the speakers working, or something. Okay. I will, uh, I'll, I'll just highlight. I will, I will consider that in a second. Uh, anyone else that, like to speak? That highlights that? really what I'm getting at here. Okay. This, this, is a, this is a building that's going to be a building with us for 100 years. Mm -hmm. No, no, no I, I understand. Surely I understand. we need to take the time and do the due diligence around it that we're well known for in the community. So I will oppose this motion for lifting it from the table. Thank okay, Councilman. Uh, well, Mr. Mayor, for the very reasons uh, Councilor Jansen has just brought up, I, I, I just I have I have so many questions remaining here. It, it feels horribly rushed. This is an eighty million dollar project, 
has a significant impact on our community. I mean, we've spent in some ways more time discussing, you know, the merits of a five-car parking variance at some of our coffee shops than we have on this project. I, I, the, the pace at which we're moving this forward is is, is very troubling, Mr. Mayor. So I I I agree with Councillor Jensen. I I I'm, I'm concerned that we're being pressured by uh, some. Uh, um, uh, considerations around the financing of this project and I, I don't think that's a good way to make our decisions to feel under the gun like that. It feels that this is the tail wagging the dog about this project and I, 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 I'm for such a project of such remarkable significance I, I feel um, really terribly pressured into making this decision and, and, and I agree we need to slow this down. This is not just a neighborhood issue. This is clearly a community issue. You can see this in the room. You can tell by the correspondence. And and uh, I, I, I feel it's my responsibility to slow this down and digest the information. Okay. Okay, my concern um, is actually the, the organization of the meeting. Because if there is no speaker outside, uh, then people cannot hear. Yeah, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. We are back there. We have no idea what's going on. We didn't even know whether you're speaking about this project that okay. we're all here for or not. We have no. No, I, no, I, uh, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with the arguments of my colleagues. Uh, but I'm, I'm, my job is to run a fair meeting at it's the same not time. At this point, you've got a whole so unless staff can rectify the speakers. Um, So I'm sorry, but the circumstances for us to be able to this is always a hot chamber. Uh, in you know, <laughs> it's always. I mean, what's the occupation? Oh, we're probably. We'd like to hear. We'd like to hear what's going on. Yeah, let's. If we can't hear, then I've got an issue with running the meeting. We're just checking, and at this point, it seems that the speakers up as loud as they can go. No, but if the speakers are not going in, into the antechamber, mm -hmm. and we have no uh, no ability to transfer, if you like, pictures of us speaking out there, then I would I, I have to question that. You don't have to applaud. I'm just I'm just trying to be fair. Okay. What? Well, that's nice, but I don't I don't need it. Is it loud or outside? Can you can you hear me outside in the antechamber? Yes. Yeah, because you're talking a little louder, but the speakers aren't working. Everybody has to hear. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to ask staff. I'm going to have to ask staff to rule on this. Could someone from staff, Mark, can you go outside? It is working. Well, one of the council members could go outside. No, no, no. Staff is that's. <laughs> which already one, have which, one out there. Which one would I send? <laughs> yeah, it was very good. Send the mayor outside. <laughs> okay, can you hear can you hear me out there or not? No. Can you hear me out there or not? Can you hear me out there or not? Okay. Okay, so, so Mark, if you could come back in. Well, you can't hear you. <laughs> okay, so. No, but if the speakers are not working, that means. But if you can't, if you can't hear outside a meeting, I think that's. I, I think, in fairness, there is a question there, because people have come to listen to a debate. They've come to be part of the debate, and and if you can't actually hear what I'm saying at any time, then I think that puts in question 
the meeting with so many people here. Okay, so um, that's, it, you know, I can be challenged obviously by members of council, but I'm going to ask, because if this happens, the, 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 uh, the discussion has been around, and I'm sorry if you can't hear me out there, the discussion is around whether this can be delayed for a new council, okay? Quite frankly, uh, and I think I actually was quoted in the Times column as saying, my style would be much prefer to send it back out to the community, get some community discussion on it, and bring it back. That's, that's how I operate. Uh, the, the question here is there's a timeline. And if that timeline, the problem here with the timeline is that if that timeline in place means that everyone in this room loses Oak Bay Lodge, two years from now, we're going to all be sitting here saying, that mayor and council, what kind of decision did they make at that time? I don't think I have read anything that says that the community does not want Oak Bay Lodge. So, so I, I, I would, majority of people in the room, want Oak Bay Lodge to continue. So I don't think this is a discussion about Oak Bay Lodge. It's about the size of the Oak Bay Lodge. And I want to know from the proponent if this is deferred, either, I mean, Quite frankly, if we put it off another week, you might as well put it off another month or two. If that is deferred, is that is is that going to be the end of this project? Because right now I've got this this dilemma that I'm conducting a meeting at which half the people can't hear. So they're not going to hear your answer. But I will try and speak as loudly as I can to make sure they hear it. No. <laughs> the uh, as I understand, and I'll speak loudly too. Yeah. I understand the question. You? Sorry. Who are you? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Thank you. I'm Howard Johnson with Baptist Housing. Oh, okay. um, as I understand, the question is in terms of what what is the impact in terms of financing and a potential delay. Uh, we have discussed this before, but I'll repeat again what my answer was then. Uh, when we entered into this process, which is an RFP process in 2009, we had to put uh, a package together, a proposal, that included financing for the proposal. And the amount of money that's involved is substantial, and there are a limited number of lenders that can actually handle such a deal. Um, in doing so, we were able to put a lender... Sir, my question is, I'm coming to that. is the project at risk? Uh, it is at risk, and I was trying to explain so people could understand, if, you, if yeah, I could sorry. continue. Uh, so we put a proposal together in 2009, the beginning of 2009, and due to various delays, we have had to approach the lender for extensions. The lender has set aside the, the amount of money, mortgage money, for this project back in 2009. They indicated to us that, that uh, they can only set aside that amount of money for a limited period of time. And that they indicated to us that we needed to draw the money down by December 31st of this year, 2011. Otherwise, uh, there would not be financing from them for this project. And so that's what I've indicated before. And so working backwards from December 31st of two, 2011 here, uh, it meant that we basically needed to close it December 15th from the financing perspective to make sure that we met that requirement and working back from those dates we needed to have uh, the variance in hand to be able to get that financing. Okay, so you're telling me the project is at risk? This I'm, project, particular I'm, project as put forward? Yes, I'm telling you from a financing point of view it is at risk and I know uh, Howard Waldner of uh, VIA also wanted to express in terms of the issue that you're talking about, Heidi. Okay, so, so that, that increases my dilemma. Because what you're telling me is the project could be at risk, so we need to deal with it one way or another. I can't conduct the meeting, though, because some people in the room can't hear. So the only way out of that dilemma is therefore to reconvene this meeting with this item on, this, on an agenda at some time in the short-term future. 
It's not my preference. I have a solution for you as well. Okay. And that would be in terms of, I know a number of people have come and indicated that they are supportive of it. And they're within this room here right now. I, I clearly see people and in favor and people against. It, correct. And I understand that. Um, if those people were willing to leave these seats here and allow others to come into these seats. No, 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 no. no. I'm, uh, it's okay, sir. I'm, I'm, you can't stop, you can't stop a meeting. You can't stop a meeting and then change your mind. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Mr. Piercy, Mr. Piercy, this is okay. Come on. That's just a bit of, bit of decorum. The gentleman, Mr. Johnson, has the floor. Mr. Johnson, carry on. Because I'm confident there are people that would give up their seats here okay, if I, it would allow the meeting to proceed because of the, the seriousness no, of the meeting. No, no. Sir, it's okay. I, it's point of order comes from, from members of council on this particular issue right now. So the question in front of us for the, for the, for the council is do we want to reconvene in a place where there's enough seats for everybody or do we want to carry on and quite frankly if we carry on I'll put it out there if I was on one team or another and um, there was a question I would challenge it. Mr. Yeah. Uh, a gentleman just called in to say the speakers for some reason are now working. The speakers are now working? Can someone, can someone just verify, and I, I don't want to play games here, either they're working or they're not working. Okay, but uh, my question to you, sir, was, are they working or not working? I think I just heard somebody say they could hear me quite clearly. Okay, okay, so, so I, my preference then uh, is actually to reconvene this meeting. When? Um, well, if, if, if council wants to reconvene the meeting, it would have to be, I would think, if, if you're going to work to this deadline, and um, there's, there's obviously a set time towards the end of the uh, end of December, um, we would put this off for one week, yeah. uh, and we would meet at the Monterey Center. And then we'd set it up as almost like a public hearing. It, it's actually only a variance request. Um, so it's not, we don't normally hold pop variance requests at the Monterey Center because there's a lot of costs involved in that. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to prejudge and I don't want to be unfair to anyone who's come tonight to speak or to listen. So I'm looking to members of council. What, what is your wish? Councillor Hood? I would think that would be fair if we did, if we did it a week, a week from now. A week from now is the 21st. We would have to cancel our committee of the whole meeting and do a regular uh, council meeting. Mm -hmm. Council briefly. I think that if people can honestly not hear out there, then I, I'm not comfortable with going through this without them being able to hear. So I would be happy to postpone the meeting by a week. We can hear okay. Um, <laughs> just for clarification, Your Worship, um, in terms of that with the election in a few days, what does that mean? Well, it means it means it means you're stuck with me still. <laughs> but you know what? Um, it uh, the the changing of the guard happens on December the fifth. It's not fair to put it to December the fifth because that's an inaugural meeting, and quite frankly, there is no business done at an inaugural meeting other than appointments to committees. Uh, and and the December the fifteenth, you you're asking a brand new council with at least three new councillors and a new mayor to uh, get up to speed and Councillor Jensen just said that it was tough to get up to speed on stuff that's coming in all the time. They're the people who are going to have to live with the decision and they should make it. Right, right. Um, Mr. Walder offered a suggestion as well but um, it's obviously a, just a suggestion. Okay, and so that was whether or not there was the opportunity to reconvene this meeting tonight at a different location or not. Well, we've got a pile to of... Ask you. Yeah, I, I don't think that's appropriate. Um, I've, got, I've got staff, I've got uh, a, a big agenda as well tonight that we have to deal with. Um, I don't think we can deal with that. But we can, we can certainly do uh, one week from tonight. Fine. 
So uh, to answer your question in terms of uh, by having the meeting delayed to next week, I do not think that would jeopardize the financing as I outlined it to you. We have to be able to draw it down in terms of uh, by December 31st and backing up from there. So to have the meeting postponed to next Monday uh, so that it can be in a setting where everybody can hear, we would fully concur that everybody needs to hear and be, be able to speak. I, 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 I thank, thank you, Lax. I think that is the democratic process. Okay, so the uh, motion was to lift from the table. Uh, I would ask then that uh, the mover and seconder who asked to lift from the table retable it. I retable it. Move second. I move that I retable. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Mr. I need, I, I need, where's that? You have to be withdrawn. That motion would have to be withdrawn I would uh, before you can put another motion on the table. We yeah. can't have two motions on the table. That's inappropriate. Yeah. I'd like just to speak to the issue of uh, whether or not it should go one week or it should go to the new council. And um, typically, particularly on, on the matters of uh, this importance to the community, uh, this significance, the impact, the size of the project, we've heard it's 80 million. Uh, what we've done in the past, Mr. Mayor, with uh, additional information, that has always been considered, virtually always, uh, at the committee of the whole level. The reason for that, as I understand it, is uh, the committee of the whole level, um, committee of the whole is more informal where uh, there can be more of a uh, questioning of, uh, of an applicant, more questionings of uh, either proponents or opponents to it. So it's more of a discussion. When we get into council, such as we're tonight, it's more of a listening exercise where we make a decision after that. Because there's so much new information, uh, and the model and the photographs, I think just to put it over one week uh, to a, another council meeting, uh, is not following our normal procedure. Normal procedure, if we receive this amount of information, would be, let's have a committee of the whole meeting. And again, what I'm hearing is it has to be, uh, has to be rushed, and we're, we're hearing that. Uh, but I think because of the significance of this project, should we really be rushing to that extent, or should this not more appropriately, in the fullness of time, be decided by a new council? And uh, certainly that would be my preference. Um, Mr. Waldner, you wanted to speak to that? Yeah. No. I appreciate that, Your Worship, and I do recognise the difficulty of the room and the challenges of the evening. I um, just wanted to make a couple of points from Beehive's perspective. We have a very urgent need to replace in the new residential care accommodation in, in Victoria, and we'd be keen for Council to consider uh, this matter at its earliest opportunity I do believe um, that everyone had an opportunity, an equal and fair opportunity, to bring all the information that they believe to be competent forward to the former meeting of the, count of the Committee of the Whole. And I would urge Council to consider this matter at the earliest opportunity. As you've heard uh, from Howard, very tight timelines here. And if this matter is not resolved um, soon, our board may have to consider taking our project to another location. This application came before Council on May 24th this year. So to have a discussion that this is you know, a, a fast or rushed process, I have to tell you, I find somewhat surprising. We have been here, as you know, on a number of occasions. We were here for a couple of meetings in the summer, which we're not able to continue because a quorum of Council wasn't available. Yes, I, I, so we, we've been at this for quite some time. Yep. Can I, can I just comment on what Mr. Wong was well, saying? I don't want to get into I don't want to get into a he said argument about this. The fact is that the first thing to do is we've got a motion on the table to go forward. I'm suggesting that it be withdrawn. We can withdraw it, and then we can we can move to table, and then I suggest we have a discussion amongst ourselves, knowing this uh, information amongst ourselves, whether we put it off for one week, or whether you want to put it off for longer than that. So the I, motion is I, to withdraw. Uh, I believe I move the motion, I withdraw. Second. Okay, move to withdraw. Okay, all those in favor? Okay. No. Oh, well, I don't think it has to be voted on if it's withdrawn. Okay, so it's with... Just, just withdrawn. Just withdrawn, so a motion to retable. Would it be in order? It is tabled on it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna entertain some discussion on when you want to put this over to. Okay, Councillor Herbert. 
I uh, would be supportive of doing it a week from today. Uh, Councilor Jensen made the point that we normally take it to the Committee of the Whole first, then we take it to Council. Fortunately, the people that <laughs> run the Committee of the Whole is, is us. So if we want to make it a less formal Council meeting and have more people talk, that's something we can easily do. So. I don't think there's a need to separate between the committee and the whole and council. So I, I would like to move that we move it ahead one week to next uh, Monday. Second. Okay, so it's moved and second, Mr. Brennan. Uh, I just want to comment that um, because notice is being given, um, we have to be precise as to where the meeting is going to be, that it's a special meeting and it'll be starting at 7 p.m. at Monterey Center. So if that's yeah. the motion. Yeah. I think know, it should. Do we know we can get Monterey Center? Well, I'm sure we can. We'll talk to the owners. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so it's being moved for the, for the uh, one week off. Uh, Councillor Nate. Well, <clears throat> I I um, in anticipation of this next in a in a week hence. I, I I still think this project is being pushed through much too quickly, Mr. Mayor. I, I, um, I, I've said my reasons. I could go through all the details and uh, the concerns that I have, but uh, it, it, it's a massive project. It, it, it's highly unusual that a project of this scope moves through so quickly. I appreciate what Mr. Waldner is saying, that we've had this since May or something, but we didn't see it, we didn't see it uh, in public until September. But because we didn't have a quorum at the end of August, so this is this is it's too quick. There are too many considerations. I don't feel I'm able to do due diligence on behalf of our community to make a responsible decision. So I I would like to see this put off to a new mayor and council, not just next week. I, I agree uh, with uh, Councillor Ney. I, I think uh, to put it to next week, I think uh, will not give enough time uh, to, to fully consider all the issues. One of the things that we haven't done, and um, perhaps um, uh, the new council will take up, would be the need to hire a, uh, a planner specific to this project. Uh, we're not in the, uh, the position where we would create a new position but uh, my um, my view is that the, the new council will would well like uh, and benefit to um, by hiring a, a a planner a sort of in other words that's an expert in our corner so to speak that can give us the uh, proper advice uh, in respect to all of the issues that have uh, been raised by the community and uh, I think we also need to take. Uh, uh, a step back to look at the reports that have been presented. For instance, the traffic report I think needs to uh, that was presented by the applicant and commissioned by the applicant. I think uh, a new council could well say, "Well, let's have our own traffic report. Let's uh, let's get a full uh, analysis by our our staff." And that can't be really done. Neither the, the planner nor the uh, independent report um, could be done in that week. So I I think if we if we um, uh, if we put it over to the next council, I think there is all kinds of benefits. The other benefit that I think it would be a uh, new council is that it might be an exploration of other options, uh, which were never uh, uh, kind of explored as far as I can tell. I heard uh, that this project, uh, where the money was put in place in 2009, which is a significant amount of time ago, that was a bit of a surprise when I heard that. That was that was a surprise. I don't. It's a bit of feedback there. Anyways, uh, that uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that I heard this was in 2009, and, and my concern all along has been the question is where was the community involvement at the outset? Why was community involvement? Uh, why did it take so long to, to engage the community till just before it had to be decided upon? And that's been a concern of mine. And I think we've heard that echoed uh, by the, the community. So 
um, I think a new council can step back, have a look at, looking at other options. We have in our community plan, our official community plan, in fact, uh, the possibility that municipal lands uh, can be offered for a seniors facility. So that's something I think that needs to be fully explored. Um, so that's one of the reasons I would uh, prefer that this matter go to a, a new council. Okay. Thank you. I'm not. <coughs> we've now got the microphones turned so high they're feeding back. So I think the decision to defer it over for one week is frankly the best decision. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to support moving it over to one week. I think uh, the applicant has actually, believe it or not, he first came in. Uh, thank you. The applicant first came in uh, 2010, in February, I think, January 11th, 2010. Uh, this, this proposal actually has been in front of council for two years, uh, in some form or another. It's got a lot of legs in the last three months, admittedly. But it's actually been, Mr. Walner came here back in January of 2010, and uh, we as a council went and looked at the Oak Bay Lodge, and kick the tires of the Oakley Lodge. I don't think it's fair. This, this council has dealt with this for the last two years. I think, I think we need to put it over for one more week. I'm prepared to do that because I think it's unfair to have a meeting where people can't all hear. But I think, the, uh, I think we, we owe it to the applicant to deal with this application. If, it's, if the decision is to turn it down, then, then the decision is to turn it down. But I don't think we can keep stringing on from meeting to meeting to meeting and delay, delay, delay. So I'm going to vote with uh, putting it over for one week. So I'm going to call the question. All those in favor of putting it over for one week? Country? Motion carries. Okay. Thanks very much indeed. And we're going to move to uh, what 10% of the people are here for, which is the next suggestion to take the uh, adjournment while we clear uh, Can we just come to order and uh, I'm going to ask the public library if they're in the room. Greater Victoria Public Library. Okay, so let's deal with the first item. Library, library signage. Um, the staff have an issue with us? No, um, <coughs> the, uh, the library is paying for the sign, and uh, you can see what, what the real location is. The only thing is that uh, we have staff thought that uh, the council, as a landlord, should have a say in whether they want to sign there or not. That's really all. Okay. Yes. Second. And seconded by Councillor Copley. All those in favour? Contrary? Motion carries. Uh, operating budget and five-year financial plan. Ms. Copley? I mean, sorry, Councillor Copley. I was not, unfortunately, not able to be at the meeting when this was, when this was approved, but of course there is a um, provisional budget, and um, I think the letter, the cover letter explains quite well um, what um, influenced the decisions that were made uh, from a financial perspective. Okay. So, uh, we are looking at a 4.32 increase? Correct. Okay. Which? No. No, it's 4.32. That's a dollar figure, I think. That's two dollars and nine cents. Right. That's right. And that's not a that's not a percentage. That's correct. A dollar figure. Yes. Okay. 
So the actual the actual percentage is 4.32, which is high. Well, um, as usual, if there are any particular questions, probably they'd be best addressed um, uh, in uh, uh, correspondence yeah. uh, before the, the, uh, the budget actually is passed or brought forward for final approval. There was a, I, if I understand it correctly, they're looking for very little in the capital plan in the way of building improvements. And I remember there was somebody here previously that was talking about some pretty major improvements they were talking about at Old Bay and the war and all that stuff. So is that gone by the way? That would, no, that would be part of the facilities plan that was drawn up uh, for a, a, a period of time. Uh, most of that will not happen or is not planned, scheduled to happen in the near future, but is, is planned for five to ten years out. Um, I don't recall the specific time frame for the uh, improvements to Old Bay, but yes, they are significant, but they're not immediate. Okay. The only other question I had is the, the highest increase is to, uh, for an increase to the library collection, and I would just be interested in maybe knowing when it comes back again, where, how do we stand in the way of collection compared to other libraries? Are we high or low? And maybe that's something that uh, maybe that's something that our covering letter could inquire. Uh, the collection, of course, uh, is it refers to the entire collection, and that's probably that uh, would be um, uh, not just books, but, but no, no, every sure. item in the collection. What I do know, of course, is that um, Oak Bay is probably about the uh, second best used library in the system. Um, it's rapidly and probably already has outgrown its capacity in many respects, size, uh, collection, etc. So, um, um, you know, those are, those are uh, points to consider as well. So if you're asking specifically about our collection, no, just no the, overall. the overall collection. <coughs> There are lots, but I don't have them. No, no, I wasn't just expecting You don't have your microphone on. No, it was just a question that maybe, maybe we could get a little more information on that. We absolutely can, but that sure. is a question, or, or, or that's information I don't have at my fingertips. No, no, I understand that. Um, what I can tell you in a general sense, though, is that um, uh, use for library services and uh, the multiple components of the collection are constantly increasing contrary to what uh, was thought to be the case or was anticipated to be the case a number of years back. Okay. So a motion to receive is in order? So moved. Second. So moved. Okay. Those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Uh, Greater Victoria Development Agency, a request for financial assistance. Mr. Sasha Angus is here. Mr. Angus, do you want to, is this a pitch? It'll be a very short pitch. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, again, thank the council for your opportunity to speak to you this evening. The agency will be turning five in April, and this last year has been probably one of our best years to date. Uh, we were very active on a number of fronts, uh, creating a new website for the region, looking at how we attract investment and talent to the region. Uh, we provided this new publication, our third edition, uh, which I'm happy to provide council copies of. Uh, and the budget we do this all under is about what normally people pay for one economic development officer for our entire operations. And so we run a very lean, mean uh, ship. We have uh, the support of all the industry and academic stakeholders in the region uh, through our board. Uh, and we were very happy about three weeks ago uh, to get word of the NSPS uh, West Coast ship bid, which the agency played a leading role in securing uh, that all the, all the support regionally for that bid, which is about $8 billion of work, 4,000 jobs. Uh, and it's going to make our number two industry even bigger over the next 20 years. And so thank you again for Council for your uh, continued support. We look for uh, some financial assistance if, uh, if you need to appropriate. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, Councilor Jim? Yes, uh, I, I agree uh, that uh, this is a very worthy organization. You've done really good work, uh, which I think I told you on another occasion. The question I had, um, had uh, is to do with this line in here, uh, in your second paragraph, where you talk about uh, the GVDA has been very successful in leveraging those resources. Could, could you give us some kind of idea what the leverage is? And, and the reason I ask is because at one point, 
some years ago, we had uh, we were wondering whether or not to join, become full members of the Regional Housing Authority, the Regional Housing Corporation, uh, particularly after we learned that every dollar we gave turned into seven or twelve, but, you know, because they levered other funds. Can you give us some kind of idea what kind of leverage ratio that you, uh, that you, that you sure. have here? In our first three years, we leveraged them five to one, uh, and we're just putting in a second submission now to Western Diversification. Uh, for about a million dollars over three years, uh, which will leverage that, uh, the, the, the municipal contribution, about 12 to 1. Uh, and we do receive uh, about three quarters of our funding comes from the private sector, with some support from municipalities throughout the region as well. Okay, so if we gave you a dollar, you turn it into anywhere between 5 to 12? Right away, directly, and the economic impact of that dollar would probably be in the millions. So, uh, Based on that, uh, Mr. Mayor, I think we haven't given them a pass. I think this is something that uh, we should uh, refer positively to uh, to the estimates community to consider as to what level of funding that we can provide. Because I think it is time for us to join this. Very Second. Good. Thank you. Okay. We move to second. It. Any further discussion? I just wanted to uh, ask Mr. Brennan um, how how if if. If a future council wanted to fund GVDA, um, how how would they go about doing it? From the sense of, it has to be it has to be tied to a project. Yeah, it has to be tied to a project which we could consider a business promotion scheme for the benefit of of, of the whole day, for which we could raise taxes. Over region. Well, well if, if 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 there's clear, I mean. If it's to the region, then there has to, then, then presumably there's a clear benefit to people in Oak Bay as well. Um, but it would have to be something, you know, quite specific in terms of, of a project or activity that, that we could identify and be able to, to raise taxes for. That's that's, and so when it comes to estimates, before it comes to estimates, you know, I'll, I'll be asking the, the organization to provide us that kind of information that the council will be able to consider. Okay. So yeah. okay. So you need. I think you got that. Um, pretty clearly that uh, we need to be tied into something that you're doing, some function that you're doing. And I think I've said this before, just making an application doesn't really cut it. Uh, but if you can if you can tie it to something that has some benefit that we can we can look at. And yeah, the project I referenced earlier, the foreign direct investment project, it's a community based investment project that uh, will be about a million dollars in, in size. So I think we should be able to meet those criteria for it. Okay. Okay. Can you wrap it? I, I like to think, see things with a bow around them. Wonderful. Uh, uh, councils love to see that as well. The good news is the conference board about two weeks ago raised their estimates for the region for economic growth for the coming year, which is positive. Unemployment is supposed to be coming down over the next 18 months, which is also positive. Um, we've obviously had a bit of a headwind over the last two years, and so this, in my mind, just reinforces why we need to reinvest in our community through economic development so that we have household sustaining jobs for our citizens and we can enjoy <coughs> so, thank you. so just just for the information of members of council um, when the regional growth strategy was done there were uh, three uh, three wishes if you like that came out of the regional growth strategy one was a, a transportation strategy one was a housing strategy and one was an economic strategy and it was decided by the board at the time but those first two would be done, if you like, by the CRD. And the third, the economic strategy, we would try and get the private sector to do, and we would leverage some money. So this actually, GBDA, has actually worked extremely well. So you're going to be congratulated. I echo the comments that uh, Councillor Jensen made, because it was, uh, I, I was in, very involved in this at the time. And the idea was to try and give the private sector the ability to run with an economic model. And I think you've done that very successfully. So well done. Very kind of you to say. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, well, I thought today might be my last meeting, but obviously I've got another one coming up as well. So um, I can call the question. All those in favor? Country. Motion carries. Next is a request by rugby guys. Move okay. approval. Second. Moved and seconded, no discussion. Those in favor, contrary, motion carries. Minutes of the meeting of the Bay Heritage Committee. Second. Point of clarification. 
Oh, I thought you were going to give us that chuckle. No. Did you see the chuckle? The chuckle? The chuckle is in the very first line that says, the amendment number one, correct spelling of name to Leslie Gilbert from Leslie, L-E-S-L-E-Y, to L-E-S-L-I-E, and then throughout the minutes, it's spelled I-E. So um, I'm sure that will come up the next meeting. She's going to get really insistent that change the spelling. Anyway, sorry, so I, I digress. Yeah, but thank you for that information. <laughs> Um, under um, the Lighthouse Protection item, just uh, simply uh, for the record, the, it, it, the, the item now states BC Heritage is hosting an information session on designation of lighthouses, etc., etc. Just a uh, correction to that would be that um, this, it's not actually BC Heritage that was hosting that. That was uh, jointly hosted by the um, Heritage Canada Foundation and the Land Conservancy uh, as part of a conference. So just for the record, I'd like to clarify that. Okay. Is, there, is there anything else in there? Councilor Nader, Councilor Coffin? I don't have Okay. Okay. So a motion to receive these minutes? You made a suit, second. Those in favor? Contrary? Motion carries. Could someone at the back open the doors just to the just one door, please? <coughs> okay. Is it as hot down there as it is up here? And is the heat right above when, right above your head? There is a sometimes I always turn it off when I come in, but sometimes it gets turned on. You always turn, John Herbert always turns it on. I always turn it off. I do that with my wife. But I, John Herbert's not my wife. There are, lots, there are lots of rumors about me, but that is. Okay, next um, we have uh, a letter um, from correspondence. Uh, three, three people regarding 966 Monterey Avenue. Yes, if you could move receive. Move receive. Second. Moved and seconded by Councillor Braithwaite. <coughs> uh, those letters can be discussed later. Uh, all those in favor? Country. Motion carries. We dealt with the correspondence from Baptist Housing. Uh, the next is three, I wait, three, five, seven. It's a a letter from uh, Carl Peterson and Pat Wilson, and that was the receipt a second up. It's, uh, it's on the uh, correspondence. You seconding it? Has everyone found it? Just, just before the tab, just before the yellow tab. Okay. Okay, those in favor? Country, motion carries. Um, there's also a correspondence from Patricia Wilson uh, on Development Variance Permit 1354 St. David. Second. It's moved and second. Same mover and second. Everyone's with me still? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Country. Motion carries. And another letter on 355 uh, Beach Drive. Second. From a Philip White. Some of these have come in and amended agendas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everyone with me still? Okay, let's move and second it for a seat. Those in favor? Country, motion carries. Okay. So now we're moving to all these table items. Okay, let's start with the first one and then I'm going to come back to new business. Uh, 1110 Newport Avenue. No, 1110 Newport Avenue is live. Uh, move from the table. Second. Second. Uh, those in favor? Country. Motion carries. Is there anyone here to speak to 1110 Newport? Mr. Beattie. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Joe Beattie. I'm really here just to answer any questions. Uh, I think it was pretty straightforward. 
This is a, a paved surface, an increase in the paved surface? Correct. A 42% increase in the paved surface? 42% uh, increase over the bylaw, but the actual surface is already paved around 50% with uh, concrete. Okay. Okay, so this would be an improvement on that? Yes, this would be um, paving stones with self draining etc. Et yeah. okay. They have parking now uh, on the concrete surface for about three spaces, but they're not the size the bylaw allows, so in effect we'll still have three spaces, um, but they'll be enlarged, one of them to the point where it will provide a parking spot for persons with uh, disabilities. <coughs> okay, any questions, Mr. B? Seeing none, the motion is live. All those in favor? Contrary? Motion carries. Uh, next item is 376 King George Terrace. Thank you, Mr. Bean. All those in favor? Contrary? Motion carries. Uh, is there anyone here to address us on this particular item? There's no correspondence on this. Um, good evening, sir. <coughs> nice to see you again. Thank you. You're quicker on the agenda than you thought. <laughs> yeah, I sure am. Um, okay. I'm just I'm here to answer questions. Okay. Anyone have any issues with this? No? Okay. Call the question. Those in favor? The country? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next is 966 Monterey Avenue. Seconded by Councillor Nave, it was moved by Councillor Copley. All those in favour? Country, motion carries. We do have three letters on this particular application. Is the applicant here? <coughs> Hi, good evening. Um, this is a um, uh, request, maybe Mr. Uh, Thomason, you can give us the background of this. Uh, essentially, the, this is a new house uh, that's uh, under construction, and uh, they're proposing to uh, have the heat pump located in the front yard and do some screening around the heat pump. Um, so it's a variance of the front yard uh, to uh, permit it in the front yard. Okay. What uh, what's been the building department? I mean, I know we had an issue a couple of weeks ago with a heat pump in the side yard. But there's a house right across the street from where we're sitting right now with a heat pump in the front yard right on the corner of Hampshire and Granite. What's the, what's the history with these heat pumps in the front yard? Uh, well, I think that was the first one that we've had across yeah. the street here in the front. <coughs> and they did a uh, nice <coughs> screening around that one so you don't even actually notice that you it's there. You don't notice it there at all. Um, so, uh, uh, that would be the history of uh, heat pumps in the front that's yard. That's the only we, one we've, we've approved? Uh, that's the only one that I know of in the last three years. Okay. Mr. Uh, Councilor Hope? And, and the, the sound measurements have been taken on this one regularly and it's... Uh, um, which one? The, the one on granite and... Uh, uh, no, we haven't done any sound measurements there. Uh, I believe... Uh, I'm not sure if uh, we've actually done a sound measurement now that it's been installed. Don't you think we, we, we <coughs> haven't had any issues with it. But, so don't uh, we do one automatically? Do we wait for somebody uh, to complain? We, I think we wait for any uh, neighbor issues, yeah. Oh. We don't go and measure them all. Uh, and this, this one, that one there is basically 25 feet from either property line where the bylaw requires 10, so it, it's substantially more there. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think, that, I think that's one reason why we haven't bothered to go measure it. And how, how far is this one from the nearest neighbor? Uh, this one would be uh, probably about 14, 15 feet. Okay. Councilor Jensen, you point? Yes, uh, and that was to do with the noise, uh, so somewhat similar to uh, question I was just asked, but uh, the, the noise bylaw would still pertain whether this was in the front side or back here, I think. Yes, uh, they still have to meet the 40 decibels at the property line. So I take it, uh, regardless of where it is, uh, you can test it at the edge of the property, is that where you take That's these right. tests? That's where we measure it. Um, and uh, has there 
there been some proposal in terms of uh, you know, the one you referred to just around the corner from here? Uh, that's been screened and, and not visible. Can you just describe this particular one in terms of screening and visibility from the street? Well, they do have some planning there. Maybe the applicant can explain it a little bit more. It's not really clear. There is a fence uh, around there, but um, it's really not clear as to what kind of screening is going all around this one. So maybe we can ask the applicant if you could come forward, please, introduce yourself. Uh, apparently, everyone's now getting cold. Um, it was funny tonight while we were discussing the Oakley Lodge, someone complained about the heat in here. And they should come in here in August, the meeting in August, just like a steam bath in here. And uh, we've never put any money into air conditioning because it seems such a one-off type of cost expense. Anyway, that's a long way from a heat pump. Uh, go ahead, good evening, if you could introduce yourself. Yes, good evening. Um, my name is Catherine Nickerson, and I'm here with my husband, Brian King, and we're the owners of 966 Monterey. And we also have uh, Judy, or rather Julie Lomers from Ladder Architects, who has been retained by us to assist us with the landscape design to incorporate the uh, heat pump into the design. So maybe I'll turn it over to Julie to describe some of the landscaping. Okay, just for the record, Julie, I didn't catch your last name. Lomers. L-O-M-M-E-R-S-E. E-R-S-E? Yes. Yeah, and it's Ladder Landscape Architects. Thank you very much. So yes, the, um, the entire front yard will have a fence uh, surrounding it, and particularly along the um, that driveway side, there's a fence as well as a screening. So it would be a hedge and then some lower screening material. So in reality, if you're walking up the driveway or walking along the street, you wouldn't see that pump at all. Yeah. Okay, I'm, yeah. I'm not so concerned about seeing yeah. it, which yeah. I appreciate though, yes. about this, the, it's the noise. Yes, and so that will help screen the noise as well, the fence mainly, rather than the planting. <coughs> But uh, perhaps Catherine can talk a little bit about her pump. It's a quiet, it's specially uh, designed as a uh, quiet, the most quiet pump on the market. And I believe someone from the, from the, from the, the pump factory. electrical store is here. Okay, could I just ask then, when you screen it and you put a fence, we've had people put sound barriers on, 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 on these fences. Is that your plan? Well, we haven't actually designed the fence specifically yeah. and so we were thinking of either a solid wood fence around with, the heat pump yes that's okay. right or if that wasn't enough then we could perhaps look at another material okay it could be okay. stone and there would be in this particular case of this fence we're trying to make it very attractive so there would be a combination of some stone in the front you know where the numbers are and stone in front of where the um, the pump is okay 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 and I, we have with us as well Rob Berry from Island Engine um, Energy, and he's going to speak to some of your questions about the heat pump. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Berry. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, these heat pumps are relatively new to North America. Yes, they are. Uh, this, this one in, in particular is not a North American brand, it's out of Europe. Uh, they stand just a little bit higher than your kneecap. Uh, they more like a stand-up suitcase, so they're not the, the big guy that we normally see out of reading on. Uh, Decibel-wise, your standard heat pump on the market runs in between 70 and 74 decibels. That would be the one that's across the road. Uh, these ones, on their highest speed, run at 49. So extremely quiet, even on the most highest speed. They're, they're a variable speed, so when they start up, they start up extremely slowly, so they just kind of start to whirl. Yeah. And then they'll climb as the energy is required, and then bring, come back down again. Okay. So uh, they have a nighttime mode as well at 39 decibels. So I don't think any screen is required at all to get it 40 decibels at 15 feet. Okay. Is, is this already in existence somewhere in, is it installed? We have dozens of them <coughs> around uh, the Great Victoria area. But just not any in Oak Bay so far? Correct. Okay. And, and no problems with them? None. And no problems with noise with them? None. Just for my own interest, what is the brand name? Uh, that one's Daikin, D-A-I-D-A-I-K-I-N, Daikin. D 
D-A-I-D. No, K. With a K. Dai Kin. Yes. Kin. K-I. Right. You got any brochures for? <laughs> <laughs> I could do a presentation next week if you like. <laughs> Our power yeah, next week. week. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, good. Any other questions? There, there. You've probably uh, seen the letters that have been sent in that have some concerns. Um, there actually was a third. Uh, it, it's laid on the agenda. Uh, it was from Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Piercy, who live next door to you, on the north side of you. And I think they were slightly concerned about uh, noise as well. So, yeah, there was one for them as well. The, uh, the gentleman who uh, uh, we gave the last permission to on the corner here, uh, he had an objection from his neighbor, and he said, he stood here and said, if there's any problems with it, I'll fix them. Make the same undertaking? Okay? Yeah. Absolutely. As Catherine said that, Ms. Nixon said that, you didn't say that, Mr. King. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever my partner says. Okay. Uh, is there any member of the public here who wishes to speak to this? No one here has actually come to this particular item. Okay, I think we've uh, had enough uh, questions. Thanks so much, Thank you. Okay, uh, what's your wish? Okay, can I call the question? Okay, all those in favor? Country, motion carries. Thanks very much. Okay. Next item is uh, 2041 Townley. Seconded. Uh, those in favor? Country, motion carries. Mr. Thomason, is there anything we should be aware of on this one? It's come to light. There's no correspondence well, on it. No, I, this one's fairly straightforward. A uh, rear addition on one side and the existing setback is non-conforming, as well as the gross floor area. Okay. Anyone here to speak to this? Sir, please come forward. Are you the owner of the property? Yeah. Could you just introduce yourself? Sure. Dave Ketterwell, I'm the owner. Okay. <coughs> and I don't really have anything else to what, add. What's driving this, Mr. Ketterwell? What's driving the renovation? Yep. Uh, we have uh, we have three boys. We have oh, a say two, no more. Two-bedroom two house, <laughs> and we were trying to help. Done. That's it. <laughs> Sympathy you got right away. Okay. Thanks very much. Anything else? Any questions? Okay. Call the question. Those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Good luck to you. Um, next item is 2014 Chaucer. Move to left. Second. Seconded. Um, those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. A lot of variances here, Mr. Thomas. Yeah, yes, there are quite a few variances. The uh, majority of them are fairly minor uh, existing situations. Uh, and the basement level is actually within 0.8 meters. Uh, that's the gross floor area variance. The basement is, is included in the top two floors also. So that's why the variance on the floor area. Does the uh, building department have any problems with this? Uh, we're working through them. <laughs> okay, is the uh, applicant here? Good evening, sir. Good evening, Robert Smoggy. I didn't. I didn't hear that. Robert Smoggy. You an architect? No. Yeah. How do I know you? Um, I applied for a previous variance. Uh, for Cranmore. Cranmore. <coughs> oh, that's fine. Okay. <coughs> so. This is your house? Yeah, uh, it's going to be as long as this variance. <coughs> is oh. The purchase is kind of subject to this variance. Okay. Um, what's driving this variance? Um, <clears throat> basically, there was um, uh, plans to put in a bathroom in the upper floor, as well as open some closet areas um, to increase the usability. Okay. Sounds like a 
to me, fairly reasonable request. What's, what's the issues that you're dealing with, Mr. Thomason? Uh, well, this didn't start off as a very clean project. The uh, stop work order has been posted and, that, and that we've lifted that. Uh, we've issued a partial permit. Uh, they were actually, the, the, not this owner, um, but a previous applicant was putting in a triplex and we've stopped that and now th this owner's taking it on to bring it back to a single family door. Okay, okay, good. Okay, any further questions? Okay, call the question in favor, contrary, motion carries. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good luck on that one. Next one, 1354 St. David Street. Second. Those in favor, country, motion carries. We've had uh, two, two letters on this. One, if not two. I thought I saw a second one. Uh, Ms. Green, did we get two on this or one? Just the one. Okay. Uh, Mr. Thomason, what's, what's the story on this one? Uh, essentially, the owners would like to do an addition to the building, and currently the existing attached garage is quite low, um, and they want to actually build a, an ex a separate accessory building for garage purposes. And uh, because the existing garage is only at five, six, or thereabouts, uh, it's actually included in the floor area, so that's why we have a variance on the floor area. The owner here. Okay. <clears throat> um, Dave Yellowmoto again. Russ Collins uh, was originally going to represent this project, but he um, wasn't able to make it tonight, so okay. I'll be answering questions. I think that. Uh, oh, um, by the way, could I uh, see those letters? I, 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 I didn't get a chance to review them. Well, there was one letter. Um, it's actually from someone sitting in the audience, but it's on the agenda, it's on the uh, docket. And Miss Green or Miss Hilton, do you have a copy of it? As far as the size of the variance is concerned, it's 76, 76.2 76 square meters of gross floor area. But, but that's because the garage is taking up the, the, the lion's share of that area. But look, and, and the existing garage is, as, as Roy said, it was only so it was only five and a half feet high, makes it, making it impossible to use. They're just taking up square footage. And rather than, and, and <coughs> the intention was originally, the intention was always to raise the basement floor slab so that they, we would get 1.2 meters um, so to make it a, a crawl space. But it's so expensive to do that. I mean, that's, that's a lot of, lot, lot of concrete to pour. It's expensive. And, and we have to pour new foundations for the slab, too, as well, both for, the, for that small, smaller crawl space area and for the, and for the garage. And so <clears throat> rather, than, rather than dump that money all into, in, into this floor slab, we would rather see just it received by council and accepted as a as a as a very low height storage area rather than a four foot storage area it would be it would be it would maintain its existing five and a half foot height so um, it's it's and <clears throat> uh, so that's 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 why the, the large square footage area it's it's a very it's a you know, very substantial large area it's, it's, 
but, but it's all going to be maintained as story. You know, <coughs> and whether it's four feet or five and a half feet high, it doesn't seem to make much difference to anything as far as the, the appearance of the house is concerned. It doesn't affect anything. The appearance of the house is essentially, um, if anything, it's, it's improved. The basic um, bones of the, of the building, the well, basic appearance of the building will be maintained <coughs> and, and, and and in our view, of course, very, very substantially improved. Um, and so, so I, I think that that I think that <coughs> the objection to the appearance of this, I think, is is is, is not. Uh, we would we would of course have to disagree with that. We think it's a, 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 it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a good improvement to the building, but the basic, uh, should I say, uh, lines of the building are not disturbed. It essentially remains the same. Um, uh, had, had, it does have essentially the same architecture. Uh, we are we are improving the materials, of course, but uh, I think that's uh, completely in line with you know, what we want to do overall with the building. And as far as the destruction of the trees is concerned, uh, the, one large oak tree is is going to be removed, uh, but that's because <coughs> um, um, and uh, Chris Paul, the city arborist, has already addressed this issue. The soil uh, around that this oak tree was was built up, and and, and it has caused the and it was built up a long time ago. It was built up um, for some reason to establish these planters around the around the trees. And this has caused the destruction or the rotting of the of the base of the tree. And so, um, as I say, uh, Chris Paul has already uh, suggested that this tree be removed. As a hazard to the to the house because it's right against the porch. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we've got Councilor Braithwaite and Coffee, and then who? Thank you. So um, there is a question. I know that there's been some concern about the materials that you're using on the outside of the house mm -hmm. um, because um, I believe that it takes away from the original intent of the house. Can you just address the types of materials that you're using, the stone that you're using on the outside of the house? The stone that we're using is um, um, <coughs> um, basically, a, I believe it's going to be uh, um, a veneer cultured stone. Uh, <coughs> uh, and we're uh, you know, uh, establishing that as a, as a, should I say, a, a pediment or a base. We're trying to establish a base for the entire building uh, just to make it look as if it's, it's, it's a, it has this, this solid um, 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 ped ped pedestal to, to sit on. I think that, that that's a, it's, it's a it's a technique that we we employ fairly often just okay. to make the. So uh, what is it replacing? It's replacing uh, just the, the existing stucco, so um, at the base of the house. Yeah. So, okay, because I think that maybe one of the concerns in, in this particular letter is that it's changing the look of of what that house house's intent was to begin with. Is that? Um, it's hard to say. <laughs> Uh, um, it, 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 it is changing the, the look of the house from that point of view, but I think it's also improving it. So I don't think that there's a... I'm sure we'll hear from the letter writer um, <laughs> on that as well. Um, and then as far as the tree goes, I mean, I totally agree with you. I actually had a look at that tree, and there's a big hole in the base of that tree, and so it, I know that that tree does have to be removed. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor Coffin? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I do know from the letter that we've received that uh, this is this house was designed by um, uh, Percy Leonard James, who is quite a well-known architect in this area. Um, and as the letter writer also notes, um, the house has been essentially unchanged since 1927. So, um, aside from whether, uh, so my first question would be uh, of Mr. Thomason: Is this? And you may have answered this before, but I don't recall. Is this property on the Community Heritage Register? No, it's not on the Community Heritage Register. However, it is in Stuart Stark's uh, book, uh, Bricks and Mortar. Okay, and is there anything that can assist us with the description and uh, perhaps the significance of that property in the in that uh, in the in the book itself, or from the book? Uh, I believe it was mostly just uh, identifying the architect, and I believe there. The garage was actually an addition, I think, after the original construction. Um, okay, so I guess, uh, again, similar to what uh, Councillor Braithwaite was questioning, 
uh, whether or not, I mean, the question of whether it's an improvement is partly in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the fact that uh, you, you are, your intention is to alter the historic fabric and aesthetic of the exterior um, is, is somewhat troubling. Uh, if there's no need to do that, and if it is really taking away from what the ascent, what the design, um, the essence of the design was in the first place, and um, you know, you being an architect or a designer yourself would appreciate that uh, um, there's also uh, a need to respect design and architecture from from the past as well. So I just I just wonder if you could address that, please. Well, I, 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 as, as I said, I think that when when you're Faced with an improvement to the house, in, in our opinion, that we we, we feel that we um, since there's there's no uh, compelling requirement to in this case to um, um, to maintain the the historical appearance of the house, we decided that any uh, the improvements that we are presenting, we we in our opinion, of course, just simply improves the appearance of the house. Um, and I should also say that we, we, it was our understanding that uh, the we, we I, I'm, I'm sure that this this uh, uh, this uh, this house renovation could proceed without uh, it, it, I mean, if it didn't have <coughs> if we weren't asking for any variances without any uh, require or without any uh, assent from council to do so. So I think the the that the, the, the appearance, of the, the way that the house is changing shouldn't be tied to the granting of the variance. That's that, not that essentially, that, that's what I'm saying, and, and you're absolutely right. In this case, we, mm -hmm. have, we have no um, ability to make mm -hmm. you, I, I'm simply putting the question to yes. you um, and um, trying to get a sense of whether you are familiar with the we, work of Percy Leonard James. We definitely respect those, uh, where, where, where we see uh, where we as designers see a lot of value in, in retaining that that house for the client. I mean, um, we, we <coughs> certainly uh, look to um, uh, preserve that um, sense of historical um, history and yeah. style. Yes, and, and certainly, as you point out, because this property is not listed on the Community Heritage Register, we have no legal ability to <laughs> sway your decision one way or another. But um, thank you for your comments. Councillor Hook and Councillor Jensen. I, I was just going to ask you about the, the low spot underneath what was to be the garage. And mm -hmm. I think I went over and visited, but not with you, but with I guess your partner. And, uh, with Russ Paul. Yeah, and I, I just remember, I think originally you'd been thinking of filling it in. and We were, well, I mean, originally the whole, uh, in fact, we, we went to work in drawings with the entire slab being raised, but it would cost so much money. I mean, you'd have to, you have to you know, it, for new foundations and uh, for new slab as well. And that that's illustrated in our working drawings, which we actually submitted. But um, as, I, as I say, I think that this is this is such a costly maneuver, for, and for what? I mean, it, what, did, what did it really? It didn't yeah. really give give anybody anything, or uh, it, it just it just simply. Uh, instead of a four, as I say, instead of a four foot um, crawl space, we would have the original five and a half foot crawl space. So. And then, as I recall, I think if you were going to fill it in with, say, dirt or rocks or something, because it would be moisture in there, you're going to have to raise the, the cement walls around or that rock. The, exactly. Yes. Rock the that, that's yeah. right. That's right. And that, and that, um, yeah, that's that's um, that, yeah. That, that motivation as well. Um, just wanted to uh, ask you about the extent of the 76.2 square meters <coughs> total 820 square feet. Can you just break down uh, for us why that's necessary? Is the specifics of it? Uh, because <coughs> we're, we are, as I say, we're, um, the, the original intent of we, what we wanted to achieve was uh, the new addition at the back. And in order to do that, we had to disregard the area of the basement, or, or sorry, the area of the garage plus the area of the crawl space. And, and but we couldn't do, as I say, disregard this area without raising the the, the floor um, in each in each of those areas. Um, um, and that, as I say, it was all, it was always our intent to do so. Was that we always wanted to say, so we wanted to we wanted to achieve this addition out the back 
rather than um, you know save the uh, save the basement so uh, save the basement and the garage so we lifted the floor of the garage and, and mm -hmm. a little bit of crawl space um, and but as I say <laughs> and and that was brought to work in garage so we, so our intent was clearly to to create this uh, crawl space area so it wouldn't be counted as um, as as um, as floor area it was neither of these areas are were usable anyway as well in the, in the habitable, let's say, because they were five and a half feet high and, 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 and in the case of the garage, which is... But how much usable floor space uh, is there going to be in the control? Is that the 76.2? Uh, how much usable floor space? Yeah, in other words, we're, we're only, we're only habitable, the 70, uh, this, is it all habitable 76.2? Uh, yes, it was all, it was all formerly habitable, uh, habitable, but it was habitable <laughs> only because it was um, over four feet. It was five and a half feet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe I, maybe I have a question. What new habitable floor space is there added to this? About 200 square feet. So and and that, that consists of the addition at the back. Okay, so that's and So two. there's no square footage up, um, there's no square footage um, on the upper floor that we're adding. All right, so it's 200 new habitable square feet. 200 new habitable square feet. And, then, and that brings us up right up to the limit. <coughs> and, um, and then, because the letter writer says there's 820, so what happened to the other 620? I, I don't know what, what he means by the 800 square feet. Okay, maybe, maybe I'll ask the letter writer who's actually in the audience mm -hmm. to just speak to that so that you're not <coughs> sort of grappling with, with an answer. Mr. Yamamoto, the writer's actually behind you. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Not above you. Uh, <laughs> Although, uh, uh, Hello, I'm Brian McKillen, one of the co-authors of, uh, of the letter. Okay. And I mean, it was our understanding that the request is for a variance of 820 square feet. So it, it was worded such, not a variance of 200 square feet. That to me would be the delta between, that would be the ask end of the day. And that was what the whole issue of the objection was about. It was about scale. I mean, we started with a whole room full of people today, and the question wasn't, could you do it? It's how you do it, and the size of what you're doing. And for us, 820 square feet was the equivalent of adding a house to that house. And I've been in that house. And the basement, to me, I know the, the garage is low, but for those of you who have houses in Obey that are built in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, I can stand up in that basement, and I can do this in that basement. I wanted that basement when I walked into that basement. Now the garage is low, but that's an issue. But our understanding was that the, the 76.2 square meters was the amount of the variance, the extra amount that was asked for. It is. So, so back, I don't quite then understand his response to your well, question. Well, they did and I'm hoping to get an answer. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because okay. I, I heard there was 200 new habitable space, and I just wanted to know what happened to the other space. Okay, so Correct. Correct. And, and, our, and our position also is that we don't believe the new garage is even part of the variance. They can just do it without any request at all. It's all rebuilding stuff. Exactly. So they can put it, they are going to put a two-car garage right in front, facing the street, as close to the proper line as they can get which changes the streetscape. Um, they're changing the house, get back to the material conversation we're having before. And then they're adding 820 square feet. Okay, so let's let's clarify, thank you, Mr. Thompson. Ms. Thompson, can we just clarify this? What is, what is this 820 square feet? Okay, so the, uh, if you look at your lower floor plan, on the uh, left-hand drawing of the lower floor plan there, uh, <coughs> the, Storage where the existing garage is, there's two storage in the same area there. That is approximately 500 square feet. That's the current garage. That's the current garage. That's just that, being moved into storage. Right. And how tall is that? Is uh, that five foot something? Yeah, that's five foot something. Yeah. So that's, yeah. is, that, is that considered really habitable? Can they finish it off? Like, if well, it's considered. To finish it off as a rec room, I take it. That's way too short. That's right. Okay, so it's a storage It's a storage area. area. However, it is counted in gross floor area in our bylaw. That's right. Yep. And now it's being added back in, although it's pre-existing. Yes. Okay. That's the, uh, the other, uh, well, the other 220 square feet that I, is uh, the storage area under the front entry. 
that's actually full height, but they were actually prepared to uh, make that a crawl space area uh, also. So that was another 200 square feet. So that was, that's about 720 square feet. There might be another 100 square feet within the addition that they are actually proposing also. So we can actually take 500 off of there because it's pre-existing. So new, that's what I'm just trying to get at, what is the new additional space? Well, the new additional space, um, well, that would be, that would be the 70, well, approximately 700 square feet that, or hang on, uh, no. Hang on, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, the new additional space, uh, essentially, if, if, if they, their original proposal was to make that into crawl space, these two storage areas. And if they did that, they wouldn't, they probably would uh, be asking for a 100 square foot variance on their addition. Okay. So the extra new stuff is about 100 square feet. Yeah, that's right. All right. And the other uh, 720 is pre existing square foot. Yes, storage area. Yes. That, I think to some extent deals with the letter writer's uh, two concerns about, or one concern about adding a house to a house. Mr. Yamamoto, do you agree with that? Um, yes, I, yes, I do. Um, that's, uh, that's substantially it. I mean, we're, we're, we're not asking for a lot of square footage. We're just saying, let's, let's just, uh, if, we can, if we can just regard existing Basically, <coughs> I, I don't see what you're going to do with a five and a half foot high space. We're just saying, rather than a four foot high space, let's just accept it as 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 um, as, as, as existing storage space. Um, it's not; it can't be used as any kind of habitable space. Um, yeah, you you got it? I think I got. So everyone, come for this. Yeah, I'll put the letter right Okay. Okay. Okay, um, any other comments from anyone? Ms. Wilson? I would just like to comment about the communications here. Oh, Pat Wilson, I live at 1329 St. Patrick. The communication here is for a variance of 76.2 meters, and that's all we're told. It seems to me that you have ferreted out the exact amount, which is a little over 100 square feet, that that should be part of this kind of communication. It would improve things immensely because we are not privy to the tours and everything else the rest of you get. No, we weren't either. Well, there you go. You can see how you confusing you can get. <laughs> did you did you actually come to the counter and ask about it, Ms. Wilson, or did you? Somewhat, did, yeah. So, but it, I didn't understand, and none of you seem to either, no. how difficult this was to get to the root of the circumstance of 100 square feet. I think in fairness that actually came up when they first brought it to council. I mean, I was I knew it was only 100 square feet. I, I understood about the storage areas, but yeah. maybe not everybody did. But I, I well, it's an addition. It's it's really <coughs> areas of 100 square feet. Yes, I think most of us went and looked at. It. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're all on the same pages now. There are the two ones. Okay, and you mentioned the root to get to the root, and we we ferreted out the tree as well. So. Okay, so uh, I'm going to call the question. Those in favor? Contrary? Motion carries. Next item is 3555 Beach Drive. Is the owner? Okay. Um, those in favor? Contrary? Motion carries. Mr. Thompson, can you just speak to this? I'm, I'm slightly confused because the letter writer, uh, Philip and Nancy White, allude to slippage on the on the water side. Yes. And there is evidence of that uh, that happened about four houses further down. Yes. Further to the south, where the whole bank gave away. But I, I didn't quite understand that this was a um, uh, extension into that area. I thought it was in the front. Well, the there is a about a three or four foot extension on the rear. Okay. Uh, to in order to uh, allow some uh, the owners to be able to walk around their swimming pool actually right now they can't even walk around their swimming pool on that side 
Um, and the applicant is fully aware that uh, full geotech, uh, geotechnical engineer is going to be required. That's something that's identified uh, in the building department. Uh, okay. and any projects along there require geotechnical engineering. Okay, good. So uh, we, they, they are fully aware that that's Okay, good required. evening. Thanks for joining us. You're actually on the agenda a lot earlier than I thought you might make it, so. <laughs> good evening. My name is Sylvia Bonnet, and I'm actually representing the client and the architect on the project. And, um, well, one of the, the variances that we're asking for are set back. Yeah. Uh, the house was a non-conforming, as it stood, and uh, the height, uh, the occupiable height on one room. That's, those are the two type of variances. So, um, did you get a chance to look at the letter from Mr. and Mrs. White? Unfortunately not. I haven't received that letter. Okay. Um, maybe <coughs> if staff have got a copy of it, you could just respond to it. Let's give you a couple minutes to read it. Just the, to carry on with what the project is about, it's also adding a top second floor to the <coughs> existing bungalow and also reconfiguring their uh, front entry and also adding a, another garage on the existing garage. So it's doubling the garage also. Okay. And I think this is the one that they actually moved the second floor in so to, to save a tree as well. That's yes, right. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's correct. Morning, that, that's fine, thank you. Um, the concerns about the stability of the bank, as yeah. it was addressed before, we will work with a geotechnical engineer and uh, that will be taken care of. The, um, we are not asking to reduce the setback at the rear. The rear is complying with uh, current setback, so that's not a variance. And um, the variance that we're asking for are side and front because they're yep. both non-conforming. And uh, regarding the look of the house and being different or not fitting within the environment, that's not a variance either. So... Okay, okay. That's why I asked the question originally about this variance at the back, because I couldn't see a variance at the back. But I do know from having visited some of your neighbors that there, <coughs> there is an issue. It, it is an issue. But it's geotech. Yep. So I just wanted to let you know that. Well, my, our client will be most interested in having that taken care of. Yeah, Definitely. that's right, that's right. Okay, any other questions? Cousin, um, excuse me, I wonder if you could address uh, a, a line here in that letter that we have. It's in the second to last paragraph where the writer talks about uh, uh, that new development should be designed to blend with the immediate neighborhood and the proposal is out of scale with the neighboring properties, particularly in the enlargement of the roof. Can you address that from a, kind of an architect's eye? What's happening is that the current house is a rancher from Beach Drive. The, the owner wanted to add a second floor or a third floor if you see it from the back. And definitely that changed the look of the house and the style of the house is quite different of what the owner required to what's um, there today. This was discussed at the design panel as well, and uh, there was a recommendation for approval from the design panel, and we think it, it's a different house. It's very fitting within the Uplands uh, type of uh, design, but it's quite different to what is there today. Sure, and, but the, what he talks about is the scale of the neighboring property. Can you give us some kind of <coughs> views on how it fits in with the scale of the neighboring properties? Not really, because the house next door is also for a large house and it goes uh, goes down onto the hill and it's actually three story high or, or more. The same with the other house next door. So both properties are actually quite large. By and comparison. By you comparison agree? with this one, yeah. By comparison to the original, I suppose, but how does it even by comparison to the proposed? 
the proposed difference is that the height it will be higher than, than the other ones. And it makes a huge difference because right now you almost don't see the house. That's that's the, the it's, uh, it's so low down. It is yeah. so low down. There. Yeah. I, I actually think this um, has actually been looked at by the design panel. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they looked at this and the, that part yeah. of, if you like, the checklist to look at these things. So, um, any other questions? If not, I'll call it. All those in favor? Country, motion carries. Thank you and good luck. Okay, we've dealt with 2251 or not. Uh, 2151. Oh, let's go back to new business. Why not? Who's got any new business? I've got two things, new business. Uh, one is good news, we've reached an agreement with, uh, with our employees uh, and they've signed off for your agreement, so that's good news. And uh, as your representative on the, uh, on the labor relations, on the management team, uh, we've also signed off. So. That's, that's good news. On the second question I wanted to bring to your attention, there is a planned development at 1969 Oak Bay Avenue. You may, uh, you may know it as um, what is now um, abstract offices, and there's an apartment building next door and a fairly big parking lot and what used to be an antique uh, swap and shop almost, bric-a-brac store. Um, and Abstract has bought the whole of, of the, uh, all three properties and has an application into the city of Victoria. It's interesting, I see Mr. D'Ambrosio sitting in the back. I didn't, I'm wondering what you were sitting there for. I didn't, you didn't even know I was gonna bring this up. Uh, maybe maybe you did. Um, I was approached by the owner of Abstract because the city of Victoria, and this is unusual, the city of Victoria had asked him, what does Oak Bay think about this development? Because obviously it's a key, it's a key entry point into the municipality. On the one side, you've got the Oak Bay Bicycle Store, which is a beautiful building, and on the other side, you've got this proposed building. I actually took a look at it, and without prejudice, um, I just looked at it and I thought, pretty nice building. Um, he has, has not formally been asked, we have not formally been asked by the city of Victoria yet to make comment on it, but he wondered if council or committee of the whole wanted at some time in the future a presentation just so they would know about it uh, and he would take any of your comments into consideration knowing that we have actually no legal jurisdiction over this at all, but as a neighbor Wondered. I thought, you know, uh, knowing abstract, they do some really good buildings. Um, the design looks, looks good, and it's actually D'Ambrosio who's on this uh, on this docket. Is, is it you, Frank D'Ambrosio? You're the, yeah, we're the architects. I, uh, is that where you're sitting here? No. No. <laughs> okay. So I actually had looked at it and thought this looks really good, and I thought it'd be nice to invite him to come at some time in the future um, and, and make a presentation on it. And ask you Mr. Denver. ask us if we, we would do that if you so okay. chose. And, uh, I just think yeah. it's a signature building in the municipality as you enter. And any comments we make, I think, uh, knowing abstract how we work with them, they would uh, they would take those comments to heart and try and make some changes. So my, oh, my, no, my, no changes. No changes. <laughs> You don't understand. Um, this is all baby. There will be changes. We'll, <laughs> but we'll tell you in six months <laughs> what they are. Um, so I just wanted some ideas, give me some uh, indications whether I should be talking to Mr. Miller. And I, think, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I think yeah. that definitely it would be nice to have um, a presentation and, okay. if possible, input. Okay. Um, the question I had, Mr. Mayor, was uh, if I, I assume, uh, you know, if there's going to be any variances to their bylaws, if, the, if their system yeah. is similar to ours, it we are similar. within 100 meters of that. Uh, so I assume we would get notice as an owner 
yep. at some point to be able to address those variances, right? Because our park is right there. Yeah, we should be at the park there. So we, we will have standing at some point to address that, uh, I, assu I assume. Uh, I yeah. kind of that is that is correct. It, it yeah, so also we, will require rezoning. Right, so, so we'll get notice on that too. But yeah. I think maybe to begin with, uh, it's not too expensive to copy some of these. But what you you have a nice package. Yeah. Yeah, if we could, if they could have something like that circulated in advance, so we could oh, yeah. have some heads up on it, so it's not too expensive in, in, in terms of photocopy. So what I'll do from that indication is I'll ask him if he can come to a committee of the whole. Obviously not next week, but sometime in the future, uh, and and make a presentation. But we're very open, uh, understanding that at this point we have no legal standing because we haven't been put on notice. But just for input. Well, to some extent, I guess we have been put on notice because I, I seem to recall that there's <coughs> there's the uh, the big notice boards on on their properties, right? So to, to that extent, as an adjoining owner, we have we have some notice. But we haven't been put on Not official notice. notice by the city of Victoria. Very well. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much. That's the only two items I have. It's, it's not very new business. It's business I should have mentioned uh, when we were doing the, um, the Oak Bay Lodge. Uh, I was kind of leafing through to see if we had all the reports that our staff had done. Uh, I saw a single one to do, a single page to do with the parking, and then in the blue sheets there was some reports. So if there is anything other outstanding, and I was trying to rack my brain as to whether or not there's any other outstanding reports that the staff did, could they be included? Those are the those are the only two I could find in the materials this time around. This time around, because the notification stage with all other development variance permit applications, we wouldn't be putting staff reports back on. But if that's your request to the I council. At the special meeting, we can put everything back on. I hadn't saved the reports, so I think that would be helpful actually to kind of review that. I, I certainly, for one, was uh, benefit. From that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's not really new business. It's just I didn't get the ore in early enough. Okay. Thank you. Um, just on the just on the subject of new business, um, obviously we've we we made a change in the uh, the agenda setting for next week because basically with a special council meeting next week we'll have no time for any committee of the whole business, um, which quite frankly then we actually come in exactly like Victoria and Saanich who doesn't do any business for five weeks doing an election. And, uh, Maybe at the next election we can uh, we can make that a kind of rule. Um, I think it's a, I don't think it's a bad one, and then to get involved in these kinds of things because I, I I'm finding myself as, as mayor in a very difficult position here uh, because uh, you know you, you, on the one hand you've got a time crunch on the other <coughs> hand you know you're leaving office in three weeks. I mean it's a you know if I was running again I think it would be different. But I think I think in retrospect. I think we need to, the next council needs to introduce a procedure that we don't have um, meetings as a, a council for probably four weeks before an election because this, this doesn't, in many cases, this, this kind of decision is not a community decision, it becomes a political decision, which is what exactly we're trying to stay away from. So I, I think uh, next council, who is ever mayor and council, should consider doing that. Okay, um, but for now I'm stuck with it. No. Um, any other uh, new business? If not, we can move on. Next item is uh, 2151 Haltain. This is a straight development permit. I would uh, move. Uh, Ms. Elton, sorry, I, 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 no, different, different question. Sorry, Mr. Brown, I no, missed you. No, no, I wasn't asking you actually. I was just conferring with uh, with my colleague. Okay, okay. That sounds almost like school. Would like to share that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I felt. Well, like he, his microphone, <laughs> his microphone wasn't on because normally I can hear what they're saying. So with respect to this development permit, I would move that we authorize uh, the issuance of that development permit as is set out on those pink sheets. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Country motion carries 1619 Little Watt. I would move approval of the 
approval. Second. Uh, I would move that the motion be uh, tabled to allow notice to be given in accordance with local government. Seconded, Councillor Copley. All those in favour? Contrary, motion carries. Next one. I would move approval. Second. I would move the tabling uh, in order to notice to be given. Second. All those in favour? Contrary, motion carries. Next, traffic is on 2188 Oak Avenue. I'd move the, uh, the traffic order uh, to uh, change the, uh, the nature of the marking then. Second. Those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Tourism, quiz recs, and commission elections. But should the motion be to a point blank to participate? Because that's what the motion says. You, you probably point, point blank to participate in voting. Uh, <coughs> probably, uh, <coughs> so there's no, uh, there's no conflict here. Maybe you can point me to do it. Yeah. So, so seconded. All those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Um, do I get to go to lunch as well? Then? <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Uh, the bylaws for adoption 4546. 4546 for adoption. Second. Seconded by Councillor Copley. It was moved by Councillor Jensen. All those in favour? Contrary. Motion carries. 4547. We'll move that bylaw 2 for adoption. Second. Those in favour? Contrary. Motion carries. Uh, first, second, and third reading 4550. Move, move first reading. Second. Second. Um, yeah, if I can just comment. Um, um, this is drafted uh, as council directed uh, at the last council meeting. Uh, there was direction for staff to <coughs> make some changes uh, to the wording, which was done. It's an under two sub two, and it was uh, making direct reference to the um, uh, sorry, the, the strategic plan and the heritage management plan. So that's in the bylaw. Okay. I should also draw council's attention to the two items of correspondence. Uh, one is from Pat Wilson of the Heritage Committee, and um, it's her opinion that uh, the number of members should be 11 as opposed to eight. And she also has the opinion that, that um, it, the maximum term should be um, eight consecutive years as opposed to six. Yeah. Uh, I also comment that um, uh, Mr. Peterson of the Heritage Advisory Panel is fine with the bylaws drafted, um, but he just makes it the comment that perhaps uh, one of the members should be a uh, professional. Uh, I leave it to council. I, I don't have strong feelings on the other quite frankly. Okay, I, I appreciate you pointing that that out, and uh, <coughs> maybe when we get to second reading, we can discuss uh, whether we want to make any changes. Um, is it appropriate then to? Pass first reading and then make changes in second, or is it better well, you, to? You, you can. Yeah. Um, the only thing is, if, if any changes are made, we would have to go back and uh, before. Okay, so reading. maybe maybe we'll have a discussion now then. Yeah. Um, these points have been brought up, and uh, Ms. Wilkin, do, you want, do you want to address us on them? It's a bit difficult when you've got um, two members of the commission and advisory giving absolutely opposite. Uh, no, he was on the panel. Panel, yeah, that's what I mean. The yeah, yeah, advisory yeah. panel. So they only met upon your request, which is Correct. probably two yeah. times this last year. We're the ones that meet. But it, it's meant to be a full ended. Yes. And so the, his concept of having a professional architect or someone like yeah. that on the new commission, I think, is a great idea. I yeah. think that adds to the capabilities of the great. new commission. The point about having eight consecutive years is the large learning curve about heritage and an understanding of what heritage means, the training you go through. We'd like to be able, if once we've trained people and sent them off to these conferences, we would like to be able to use those skills and not say, oh, well, six years, too bad. There, and then the other point about the eight, you know, like maybe you can say eight minimum, 11 <coughs> maximum, we also find it is very difficult to get volunteers. And 
we are not going to be able to have all these wonderful subcommittees, at least not starting up as a commission. It's going to take a long time to develop that kind of cachet in the community. What we need is for the majority to be able to sit at the table and participate and have the enthusiasm because they are at the table. So that's where that part of the request comes from. Okay. On the eight minimum, 11 maximum, do you include the appointee from council? No. Okay. No, they, they generally are non voting. They are non voting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and the staff liaison would be non voting yeah, also. Yeah. I wouldn't mind some comments from council about eight minimum, 11 maximum. The, the issue around going eight years is all our committees are six years. And I think, uh, quite frankly, if we start to do, like this was the, I actually made this argument uh, for one member of the commission, the rec commission, to be staying and getting extended to eight years. And I think it's a good point, but I think it needs to be looked at in the light of all the committees uh, of council. Because like the Board of Variants, okay, uh, can, can be quite onerous as well. Uh, not taking any away from heritage, but uh, sports and rec, uh, that's the biggest budget. That's one third of the budget of the municipality, uh, parks and rec. And if you get it wrong and numbers start to change, the municipality's in big trouble. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't disagree with you that you look at extending people if they want to stay. It's not a, it's not a requirement that you stay, but I think. I think it's actually something that the new council should look at uh, and put in and think about as a policy, whether they do it. This, we can, we can pass this so it's in place now. I think we can do eight or 11, change that. Mm -hmm. but, but I think extending it to eight years, we should refer that. And if, if council, future council decides to change it, then they can actually change it right across the board for all advisory bodies. And I, I would recommend that. I'll be here to remind them. Yeah, no, 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 I, I think that's good, so, is that okay? Yes. Okay? Okay. Excellent, excellent. Uh, that's just my comments, I don't want to buy anyone else, but, uh, um, Councillor Copley. Um, just to comment, um, um, Ms. Wilson, about your recommendation um, to include a professional, a professional what, architect? Architect, designer, someone who has an understanding of buildings, even a landscape architect, because our green spaces are critical also and they're part of our heritage. And there's also the issue of knowing the history of a house, who lived in it and things of that nature. All of, you know, we could have professionals in a whole different set of skills, but uh, yeah. The point about the architect I think Carl was making was he is an architect and yeah. he has sat on the advisory heritage advisory panel and brings to it a set of skills that right now we have a non-practicing architect on our group, but that's it. Yeah, no, I, I, I actually think it's a really good suggestion and um, I, would, or I would certainly support that. So um, would I, I think that the, uh, the, the criteria for selection for these committees um, should reflect that that requirement, and then that should go back to the <coughs> strategic plan. And so, it, it, you know, if it's all tied together, if the mandate of the committee is clear for the commission, rather, uh, then I think you are going to attract the people with the appropriate skill sets. So, good suggestion. Okay. So why don't we? Can we change it, Mr. Brennan? Yes. Uh, on eight to eleven, minimum eight, maximum eleven. Um, defer sure. making a decision on the eight years and put in there one of whom must be a, uh, a professional uh, architect, landscape, etc. that kind of way. Could, could I address that? Yeah, go ahead. It, because um, I think it's a good idea to encourage a professional. Yeah. My concern is if we put it into the legislation and we can't find anyone mm -hmm. in that, in that mm -hmm. year, we can't constitute their... Yeah. So I would think it would be wiser to put it into a policy, not into the bylaw. The same thing with the eight minimum and uh, issue, because if we can't find eight willing people in a particular, you know, in a particular year, we you can't meet. So um, I, I would think it might be better up to if we have it up to a maximum of eleven, because if you put a minimum, you can't reach the minimum then you're in trouble, you, you can't do any business. So 
So that's what I, I think that would be having that flexibility. I think might be a little better. So, uh, just a, well, in the bylaw, quorum is actually five. So I mean, you do have still a, have a meeting with a quorum of five. So yeah. there is a flexibility there already. But but if we put in the just in, in the r rules and that there must be an eight members minimum, uh, quite apart from the quorum, and you can only find seven willing bodies, then I don't think you can proceed, right? If we if we <laughs> if we put a minimum uh, constituted number. Ms. Hilton, you're looking puzzled. No, I think I think that's correct. I mean, if you, if you don't have, if, if the bylaw says you have to have eleven. And you don't have a level, and you, you don't have a properly constituted body. That's right. Yeah. So I, I think if we can if we can make it up to eleven, yeah. we keep the quorum. So which means that we always have to have five at some point. Uh, well, or or the other way to put it is, and I've seen in a number of because uh, I've looked at a number of governance issues over yeah. the years, uh, a, a quorum is often defined by half the number of, of people that are on the board. Right. So if you only get seven in one year, a quorum would be four as an example. Just, uh, there's just a few thoughts there. Uh, just because uh, we, we don't want to have a, a bylaw and then find out we can't meet because we're in contravention of the bylaw. Um, just to, if I can go back to, to, to the mayor's question, just on, on a procedure, you could do first reading and then direct staff to, to amend it, but frankly, there isn't much point because I got, we have to go back and, and, and amend the wording of the bylaw and bring it back. You can't do third reading if you're going to amend it tonight. Yeah. So we may as well just take it back and amend it. Yeah, if, 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 if we're in agreement. Yeah, um, but, I, but I do need clear direction on what the amendments are. Yeah, no, no, I'm yeah. just, I'm just um, and I think uh, Councillor Jensen's making a good point, mm -hmm. but not tying our hands, Councillor Coffin. Well, no, I would concur with that. I think encouragement, uh, and that and that encouragement being included in the, the desired criteria okay. for, for selection of members, rather than it being a requirement, is the appropriate course of action to take. Okay. So, uh, what's the uh, motion you want me to do now? Well, you should withdraw the, 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 uh, the motion because there was a motion to. There was a motion for first, first reading. reading yeah. So, you want that withdrawn? Mm -hmm. With the mover and the second that withdraw? Yes. Okay, and the, is staff clear about what's required? No. <laughs> you have, have to be pretty clear on, on, on how you want to amend this. Sorry, I forgot to turn this on. Um, I've heard. Um, up to 11 uh, for, for the number. Um, but I think you have to have a minimum, though, um, whatever that, that may be. And then the quorum could be, you know, half plus one or something like that. Or, yeah. Councillor Jensen, you want to finish your thought on that one? In terms of the, the quorum? Yeah. Yeah, because quite often, whatever the, the number, I mean, you could put a minimum of five people, for instance. Mm -hmm. It should be a fairly low minimum that we're confident we can always reach. And then the quorum would be defined uh, as a, uh, a half of uh, the, the number of people on the board. In other words, if you have six, a quorum would be three. Uh, or you could have it as half plus one. I mean, there's a variety of ways you can do it. But the only, the only trouble with that is you have, if you have, okay. Yeah, I, I, I think that there might be just a, a, something a little bit wrong with that in that if only four people show up for a meeting and there's a, a normally a committee of 11, um, the quorum only has to be two no, no, in that no. regard. No, no not, of the number, not of the number of people showed up, the number of people who have been appointed. Have been appointed. So if one year you appoint eight, a yeah. uh, quorum would be four. Another year you appoint uh, six, a quorum would be three, right? Mm -hmm. If it's 11, so, yeah, so yeah. it's always of the number. I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's not untypical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But it should be, it should be half plus one, I think. Yes, half plus one. Sorry. Um, okay, so I get a minimum of five, maximum eleven. The, the uh, issue of um, that the professional should be policy and not in the bylaw, which, which I, I, I agree that that does tie your hands down. Yeah. yeah. And then leaving off the third issue for for now. Yep. Great. Yep. Yeah, okay. that's back to be brought back sometime in next year. Okay. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Good. Thanks very much. Okay. So when would it come back? Uh, the uh, the bylaw will come back at the twenty eighth meeting. Of this month. Of this month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so finally, the four five five one.
is the uh, Mayor and Councillors. Second. Move and second. Those in favour? Okay. Motion carries. Second reading. Second reading. Four, five, five, one. Second. Second. Discussion. Those in favour? Okay. Motion carries. Third reading. Move third reading. Four, five, five, one. Second. Those in favour? Contrary. Motion carries. In camera. We got an in camera meeting. Move that in the open portion of the meeting. The council can adjourn the morning closed session. We can meet to discuss personal information about an identity. Identifiable individual who holds or is being considered for a position as an officer, employee, or agent of the municipality, or as a position appointed by the municipality, and to discuss the relations or other employee relations. Second by Councillor Tent. Those in favour? Andre, Marshal Parrish. Thanks, everyone, for staying to the end. Amazing how we whittle you all down. So, 200 down to 5 at the end.